What's up, everybody, and welcome back to A Beer Day with TK. It's an overcast fall day here in Findlay, Ohio, and I'm hanging out in the beer shed getting ready to check out a new beer. Now, if you remember about a week or so, I had uploaded the first beer, which was the Lachouf Nice, which was the winter beer from the Lachouf gift pack that I bought. And it came with four beers and this glass. Now, the reason there's been such a delay is I've been sick for about a week. It looks like I got COVID again, um, so I haven't had a beer, and I think it's probably going on... 10 days or something since I've had the last beer, so I'm getting back at it. I was uploading some of the old ones that I had uh, on the computer, but now that I'm feeling better, we're going to check out the, the newest one from the Lachouf gift box, and this one is Mikshouf. It has a little blurb on the back here. It says, Among the mythical characters living in Fairyland, some are more unusual than others. Malcolm, for example, is different because of his accent and his kilt. When it comes to beer, his favorite is McShoof. The delicious flavors of aniseed, licorice, and toffee tickle the taste buds. If you listen to him, he will boast of its ruby sparkle, uh, its smooth bitterness, and its strong character, worthy of its native Scotland. Although robust, McShoof does, does, goes down as easily as La Shoof. So, when I hear kilts in Scotland, I think of my main man, Don, from Don's Beer Reviews. So, if you don't check out Don, check him out. I'll throw a link up there. Uh, his videos are awesome. I'm going to have to see if he can get a hat and a kilt and pull off the Malcolm from the McShoof bottle. Let's see what you can do, Don. I think this is a Christmas gift right here. You could look like that. So, let's check this bad boy out. Uh, let's see. This is a Belgian Strong Dark Ale, 8% ABV, 20 IBUs. Uh, the cap, I love the Lachouf caps. They always have the little gnomes on them. Oh, I just dropped that one. But this one has Malcolm right on the crown or the cap. So I'll throw a picture of that up so you can see it. I always save these. I don't know why. I've got a whole bunch of them, but it is what it is. I think they're pretty neat. Um, Ratings-wise, this thing does well as well. Untapped, 3.64. Beer Advocate, 3.98 with a 89 very good overall rating. I'm a big fan of the Lachouf one, so I'm thrilled to be able to give them a try. Uh, all right, so let's see. What, actually, this is the Delirium Noel glass. I grabbed the wrong one. This isn't my Lachouf glass. This is the Delirium one. Uh, I'd actually tried a little tip today. One of the Belgian viewers had suggested trying the beer in a glass that's already wet. Said that it does something about opening up the flavors of this and that. So I figured I would give it a try today. This is a wet glass. Now, as far as color... It kind of looks brown, right? I got my SRM chart here. I would probably say maybe mid-20s, 27, 28. And it is kind of like a, a ruby brown hue to it. It is, you know, it is kind of like it says. The head, probably a finger and a half, depending on how meaty your fingers are. Nice khaki colored head. Doesn't seem to be going anywhere. The nose. The nose is interesting. For me, you definitely pick up some spiciness. Maybe it's just like the Belgian yeast kind of smell. I think you pick up toffee. I was looking up uh, on Beer Advocate, and some of the descriptions were all over the place. Some of the things people were saying this smells like. I definitely think you get some kind of maybe like a, a, a licorice type smell as well. So I think it does deliver on those on the nose. Smells pretty good. 8% doesn't smell overly boozy, so that's positive. Hey, cheers. First beer in about 10 days. COVID can kiss my ass. I don't want to see it anymore this year. Thirst thing's first body, medium. It's got a nice body to it. Flavors, picking up a couple of different things. One thing it doesn't say on the bottle, but I saw a number of people note on Beer Advocate, was kind of a brown sugar taste, and I 100% think you picked that up. Now, I don't know if it's, it's obviously not made with brown sugar. Maybe it's something in the way it caramelizes when it cooks. Maybe that's what people are describing as the toffee taste. Um, I think you smell, it, the smell reminds me of toffee. The taste reminds me slightly more of brown sugar than toffee, but you pick it up. There's also a slight bitterness to it, which I'm going to um, ascribe to the, the licorice. I'm not a black licorice fan. I actually hate it, to be honest. And I was a little worried when I saw licorice on there. I thought it was going to be a heavy 
um, black licorice kind of taste. And it says aniseed. I think anise tastes very similar to licorice. They have a very similar kind of taste. And you definitely pick it up. But I think it's whatever the sweetness is of the toffee or brown sugar thing balances nicely against that bitterness from what I'm going to assume is the licorice and the aniseed. Uh, and it actually does it really nicely. As far as the 8%, I think you can pick it up. I think you know that this isn't a Coors Light, obviously, right? You know that there's something to it. Um, but it doesn't burn like maybe some other 8% beers that are not so well-made wood. Um, I pick it up like the back of your throat. You get a slight, it's not a burn when you drink it. But I think I get like a slight burn at the back of the palate, just letting you know that there's a little more to it. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, the other thing I would say... Um, I think that this is a pretty solid beer if you're not ready for some of the bigger Belgian beers or you're trying to, uh, you know, dip your toe in the waters as the, some of the awesome beers avail available in Belgium. This would be something nice to kind of bridge the gap if you start it with something like the Blonde. Because I think this four-pack came with the Winter Ale, the Blonde, the, the, the um, Dark Ale, and then the other one was like an IPA or something, which is a bit strange. Not what I'd expect from, from Belgium. And I don't think I've ever had that one yet. So, you know, if you're kind of... Um, try to learn about these beers. If you start it with the blonde, if you're not, you know, kind of into darker beers or bigger beers, this would be an awesome next step because um, it's got the the ABV, but the body, the body is nice. The flavors are nice. It's got a nice little, um, I would say a bit of a, uh, it's going to sound strange, but this kind of reminds me of like a cinnamon roll almost, not the cinnamon, but like if you had like brown sugar and the breadiness, and then you also had a little bit of licorice to it. Um, the flavor pairings work really well together. Now, is that a big surprise? Of course not, right? Le Chouf is a wonderful brewery. It gets almost a 4.0 in Beer Advocate, I think, where the critics are a little harder. So I, I would say that that's probably an accurate grade for this. I think this is a really good beer, and for me, I would give it a big thumbs up. Uh, hopefully you like the video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button. If you don't mind, hit subscribe. I'm clawing my way towards 1,000. I think I'm around 895. Um, I'd love to get there. I don't think I'll ever make a bunch of money off of this, but maybe it's just a personal victory to get to a thousand. So if you can hit that subscribe button, I would appreciate it. Also, you got any comments or questions? Jump in down below. I know this is pretty widely available, so I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that have tried it. If you have, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Hey, until next time. Cheers.